We welcome you back to Conway, Arkansas, where we are moving up the start of the 2A baseball championship to try to beat the weather. It is Woodlawn and Palestine Wheatley. Good evening. Thanks so much for joining us on this Friday night. Kyle Deckelbaum and Kevin Bohannon with you. We are either going to see the continuation of a dynasty or one team's first championship. The Woodlawn Bears, Kevin, need no, no introduction. This would be their sixth title in seven seasons. They have been rolling. Meanwhile, Palestine Wheatley making its first ever state championship appearance. That's right, Kyle, and for Coach Kevin Whitson, this is his first game as the head coach of the Palestine Wheatley Patriots as an official head coach. He got the designation after the semifinals. The new superintendent met him on the field. So with Tommy Richardson, it's his 30th season, 12th state title, and he's going – it's 12th title appearance. Yeah. Yeah, and they're, they're going for their – Six out of seven right yeah, now. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Three straight, meanwhile. Richardson, certainly a legend in the game in this state, and we'll get into him. Let's talk about Palestine Wheatley, and it's Brody Parker who sets the table for them. Yeah, Brody Parker, he'll be playing a shortstop tonight. Uh, he's on base percentage is over 400 this season. He's got two triples, 18 RBIs. Should be a really good lineup. Uh, at the top of the lineup for this Palestine Wheatley Patriot team. And meantime for Woodlawn, Jace Bishop leading a powerful Bears lineup. Yeah, Jace Bishop on the season as a pitcher, Kyle, he's 7-0 and on the season, but he's going to be playing center field tonight, hitting in the seven hole. Uh, really good lineup for this Woodlawn Bears team. Look for them to get the ball and play quite a bit tonight. You saw a shot of the weather there. It's a Woodlawn team that has eight state titles since 2008. We mentioned five of the last six. This would be three straight, six and seven years, 12 finals appearances since 2008. They've reached the state title game seven straight years now. Advanced to the state finals in 11 of the past 15 tournaments. Let's talk about how these teams got here. And first for Palestine Wheatley, they were 12 and nine before the Magic started clicking last week in Greenland. They overcame a one nothing deficit. Did Palestine Wheatley scoring five runs over the final three innings to get past a scrappy Ryzen team, five to one. Then they beat two number one seeds, upsetting host Greenland, six to four, and the big upset over Episcopal, eight to three. That was the shocker for sure in the state in order to get here. Meantime, for Woodlawn, boy, they just continue to run rule everybody. Three run rule wins in this tournament. That big win there over Buffalo Island Central in the first round. Mansfield 17-5 in the quarterfinals on Friday. Cedar Ridge 10-0 in the semifinals on Saturday. And they get here to face Palestine Wheatley. So the two coaches found out just about when we did. They got to the ballpark all about uh, 5.30, 5.45 yeah. <laughs> or so. And UCA, who actually the Bears team played their game on this field this afternoon, clear them off. The two teams arrive and they were told, Hey, start warming up. First pitch about 45 minutes away. Let's go. Yeah, we met Coach Nick Harlan for the UCA Bears as he was coming off the field. They beat Eastern Kentucky 4-3 to three today. And we met Coach Richardson right before the game, and we found out from Don Brodell from the AAA that we were going at 630 tonight. So Coach Richardson is a man of – he likes to go through his routine. He always has. Every time he's been here, he wants the same routine every time out. So uh, that's what he was getting ready for. So for this Palestine Wheatley team – what a run here to the championship. It is a rematch, by the way. Woodlawn won 12 to 1 in five innings back on March 23rd. That was a tournament at Baptist Prep. Tied for the Patriots' most lopsided loss of the season. The Bears had 12 hits in that game. Let's take a look at the batting order here for the visiting Patriots. It'll be Brody Parker, the shortstop, leading things off, followed by Brent Medford, the third baseman. The pitcher, Jacob Hitman, hits third. It's the catcher, Austin Varner, batting cleanup. The DH is James Parson. The center fielder, Trey Guthrie. Brady Bass hits seventh. He's the first baseman. Then it's Ty Myers and Blaine Brown, the second baseman. So that'll set things up for the Patriots here. And we can take a look at the defense alignment here for Woodlawn. And it's Weatherford, Bishop, Lunsford around the outfield. It's a strong outfield for the Bears. Butler, Jones, Hall, and Stover around the infield. Wilmoth behind the plate. Austin Howard, Kevin, gets the start on the mound. Yeah, Austin Howard, he's going to pound the zone. Three-pitch mix, got a really good slider. The fastball, he's going to try to run it in on the right-handed hitters for Palestine Wheatley. But the big thing, Jaden Wilmoth behind the plate, he's really taking his game to the next level. Started out last summer, and he's just gotten better every game since. Struck out six, did not walk a batter in a 10-0 semifinal win over Cedar Ridge. 
in five innings. First pitch of this 2A championship. Grounded right back to the pitcher. And the throw over to first in time for out number one. Yeah, that's what you want. One pitch, one out. That's the way we that's the way Howard wants to work. He's gonna work fast tonight too, Kyle. Well, we will certainly welcome that. We mentioned the weather kind of looming and might be headed our way in just a little bit. So we'll yeah. certainly take a quick working pitcher in this game. Yeah, Howard, he, he throws a two seam and a four seam. So like I said, he's gonna try to run it in on the right handed hitters, uh, run it up, try to saw them off. First pitch to Brett Medford, missing inside. Well, it is a Woodlawn team that has won 20 straight. Last loss March 23rd to Class 5A Mountain Home. And that win, as we mentioned, that same day they played Palestine Wheatley. And that was win number one of this 20-game win streak for the Bears. That's right. They're 30-3 and three on the season, and only one loss has come to a Class 2A team. That was Horatio. Next pitch hitting the outside part of the plate. Yeah, you see right there, Wilmoth, he's going to steal some strikes tonight. He like, he brings it back. He, if, he keeps, if he keeps it within his frame, he's going to get those strike calls tonight. No wind out there right now. Gorgeous temperatures at the moment. We have been so lucky as far as weather goes. That hitting the outside corner there. Yeah, you see right there, if Wilmoth, if he keeps a quiet glove, he's liable to get those strike calls all night. And if, if, Howard, if they're liable to go out there with Howard all night, he's going to get those strikes. It's going to be tough for Palestine Wheatley. Yeah, we got that rain earlier, a 25-minute delay during a softball game this afternoon. Kind of cooled things off a little bit, too. Oh, it sure it's did. nice out there. And you know how warm it can be around the turf. Swing and a miss. Strikeout number one of the day for Austin Howard. Yeah, Kyle, you saw that slider right there. Howard goes to it on a two-strike count. Same thing with Steele Eves earlier. He wants to work off the outside corner of the plate, works out there and throws it into the other batter's box. He tunnels it very well, comes out like a fastball and breaks off the edge. Good job by Wilmot Pitcher there as Jacob well. Hitman. Jacob Hitman, the pitcher, is going to step into the batter's box here with two down. See Wilmoth going to the, the armband. It, it's one of those things that's really come along in baseball now. What is on there? Explain that. So every coach is different. Every program is different. But they'll have the pitch call and the pitch placement. So mm -hmm. uh, And usually every infielder has them on too, so they'll know what's going on. You see Howard checking his wristband right now. They don't have to show signs anymore. So it helps with runners on second base especially. This one. Skied in for the first hit. It's going to roll all the way to the wall. Bishop's going to pick this one up and get it back into the infield. Meanwhile, rounding around second and headed to third is Hickman. The throw, not in time, and it's a triple. That's what Palestine Wheatley needed in the first inning right here. Kind of break the nerves a little bit. Uh, big hit by Hickman right there. He found that big gap, and playing this is different than playing on the high school field, Kyle. It's a lot of room out there to run. Yeah, it sure is. This is a big field. Hickman did a great job of staying through the baseball right there. He, a lot of times you see left-handed hitters pull off that pitch. He stayed on it and drew, drove it into the gap. Get a pinch runner there, I believe. So the first hit of the game is a triple for Palestine Wheatley. That'll be number 16. Lane Westbrood coming into pinch run for Hickman. Gets a good lead. Here's the pitch with two down. See, Howard looks very comfortable working on that outside corner, Kyle, and unless he has to bring it in a little bit, the, the umpire, he'll establish the zone in the first inning, and that's usually where the Coach Richardson tells his catchers, if they're going to give it to you out there, let them go. Now, Howard mentioned that 10 0 semifinal win, struck out six, did not walk a batter. Similar stats in the regional final against Ryzen, struck out nine, no walks. He is 13 0. And we mentioned in the game earlier, like wins don't necessarily mean anything. 13 0 certainly means something when you're a pitcher. That's exactly right. And Howard has the most wins in the state, of course. I think still he's got his 13th win today. So this would be the 14th for Howard. That would be tops in the state in terms of wins for a pitcher. And we saw Steele Eves lead Lone Oak to a 
victory in their 4A championship earlier. An impressive performance. Austin Howard, who was so sharp early and getting the outside call, trying to find the plate here a little bit. That's right. And pitchers, it, it's weird because they're different, they're different beings when runners are on base. When colleges are looking at pitchers, they want to see if you can control a running game and how you react to when runners are on base. And that's one of the big things that separates a really good pitcher from just an average pitcher. Swing and a miss from Varner. Fastball looks like it's got a little rising action out of that high three-quarter slot for Howard. It's going to be tough for the Palestine Wheatley hitters to catch up with. Austin Varner, the catcher, just a sophomore. Only one senior on this Palestine Wheatley team. Miss in the outside corner. It's a walk. Howard is a guy who simply does not walk people. Yeah, he's got that really good strikeout to walk ratio this season. As you mentioned in the semifinals, he did not walk anybody. He had six strikeouts. He settled down a little bit, and it's, it is different, Kyle, pitching off that turf mound, which they have to get used to out there pretty quick. Yeah, a lot of teams have tried to practice on turf this week and get used to that. Yeah, they usually give pitchers a, a chance to come out here and actually warm up on the mound and kind of get used to it. And a lot of these kids playing travel ball during the summer, they've played at these college fields and even high school fields that have turf now, so it's not as uh, foreign as it used to be. Well, you, you would think with the turf infield, by the way, you see some yeah. pretty normal lack of bounces, but we've seen some weird ones for sure over the last couple days. So now James Parson, the designated hitter, swings through the first pitch. Runners on first and third as Palestine Weekly looks to strike first here in the top of the first inning. Yeah, that's what Howard needs to do. If he gets ahead right there, it, it's smooth sailing for him. Pound the fastball, pound the zone, and get ahead of batters. Foul back. Yeah, I imagine Coach Richardson talked to his pitcher before the game. He has a good two-pitch mix, but if he can get ahead with the fastball early, especially in the bottom part of the lineup right here, he shouldn't have to throw very many pitches, and that would... It extends the game for him. Into left field. Weatherford coming over. It's the shortstop Jones that makes the catch. And Palestine Wheatley will strand two. Woodlawn coming up. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service, real people. This month on Arkansas PBS. Bought it because I loved it. Find out if Leslie loves it too next time on Antiques Roadshow from Little Rock, Arkansas. At a time when America has become increasingly divided, it's important to consider the things that connect us. His vision is broader than the American Revolution. The things that he spoke of, that he wrote about, had a certain amount of power. Only on Arkansas PBS. Let me take you for a ride on the baseline. Let's go! Back here at Bear Stadium on the campus of UCA in Conway. We head to the bottom of the first inning after Palestine Wheatley strands two, and here comes Woodlawn. We'll take a look at their starting lineup here. Brayton Jones is going to lead things off. He's the shortstop. He's followed by Garrett Weatherford in left. Owen Stover, the first baseman, bats third. It's Jaden Wilmoth, the catcher, batting cleanup. Dylan Butler at third. Jace Bishop, the center fielder. Austin Howard on the mound, just navigated out of trouble. It's Tate Hall and Dylan Lunsford, the right fielder, batting ninth. So Jones to lead things off here. Brayton Jones for a Woodlawn team that is as much of a dynasty as anything else we've seen in this state. Jacob Hickman, the starting pitcher for Palestine Wheatley. 72 strikeouts, 1.53 ERA. Opponents hitting 188 against him. And the first pitch, swinging and fouled away from Braden Jones. Hickman escaped early trouble and led Palestine Wheatley to that first round win over Ryzen, a win that 
You know, Kevin certainly means a lot to Palestine Wheatley, cross county rivals there. That's exactly right. And Ryzen had come in really hot, finished third in the conference, but second in the district tournament and second in the regional to Woodlawn. So that, that was a really good win for the Patriots. This is, as we alluded to at the top of the broadcast, a David versus Goliath matchup. There's no way around it. Palestine Wheatley is a Cinderella team. Their first finals appearance. They did reach the semis in 2017 and 2018. Big swing and a miss. Yeah, the 2018 was up at Pangburn. I had the privilege of calling that as an umpire, and they faced a really good Parker's Chapel team that went on to win the state tournament that year. One, two to Jones. Good breaking ball in there. Caught looking. Strikeout number one on the day for Hickman. Really good 12-6 curveball right there from Hickman. Just kind of worked it off the outside corner and dropped it in there. It's really good secondary pitch for the young man. You wonder how much, Kevin, that Palestine really finds themselves thinking about that first matchup back on March 23rd. Of course, a long time ago, but you wonder how that can't be on your mind. Yeah, and that was at the end of a three-day tournament, I believe, and you get three games in three days. So, you know, pitching at that moment, you never yeah. know what you – it's kind of a Johnny Allstaff at that point. They're <laughs> just throwing any arm that they have. This is Garrett Weatherford, the left fielder. Well, he has some size to him, doesn't he? Yeah, Hickman. he does. We talked about earlier the Ashdown football players. He looked like he could play football for the <laughs> Patriots. Ashdown, just about everybody on the Panthers looked like they could play middle linebacker. Yeah, uh, Nash Brown, the first baseman, man. Talk about middle linebacker in the four, class 4A, class 3A. That, that's the build you want. 2-1 pitch to Weatherford, foul back. Umpire took a shot right there. Yeah, I sure did. You can relate to that. <laughs> yeah, so you yeah. have, so let's, let's set you up here. You have coached, you have... Play, uh, umpired as well? Yeah, I coached umpired. I coached uh, high school baseball at, at North Pulaski and then coached football at, at Sylvan Hills and been to the Arkansas Prospects program for 10 years. And uh, You feel for that? Yeah, it, it's back-to-back uh, <laughs> -back right there. Caught looking once again, strikeout number two to begin the game of the first two batters faced for Hickman. Yeah, and you see Weatherford right there talking to the on-deck batter, who Austin Stover coming up. He, you can pick up the curveball. That's what he was telling him, that you can pick it up early out of his hand. That's what they're looking for, so they won't be surprised next time through the lineup. Big breaking ball there, big curveball, and Owen Stover that is the first baseman. One thing out there today, Kyle, is, is getting a feel for the baseball, especially, you know, nerves are going, you got a little sweat going, you kind of get a little grip. I haven't seen anybody go to a rosin bag yet. It surprised me. <laughs> of course, the weather helps with that as well. You mentioned the rain has really cooled things off here. Yeah, got a little cloud cover. You don't have to deal with the, the glaring sunshine because it gets hot on that turf, as you no, mentioned yesterday. Pitch from Hickman, a little low. Yeah, Hickman had been working the upper part of the zone. He kind of went down right there, just below the kneecaps. And, it, you know, if you can live right there and get the strike call, you can get a lot of ground balls, and the turf will eat those ground balls up. Hickman, by the way, just a sophomore for a Patriots team with just one senior. That's a walk, first base runner. Let's take a look at the Palestine Wheatley defense behind Hickman. Left to right in the outfield, Myers, Guthrie, Worley, around the infield, Medford, Parker, Brown, and Bass, and it's Varner catching Hickman. Jaden Wilmoth, the catcher here. Yeah, you talk about Wilmoth, his defensive prowess back there, but you know, hitting cleanup for Woodlawn is, is something that he takes pride in. I talked to him a little bit earlier in the week after the semifinal win, and he's just been on a roll of late, hitting you know close to 400, a little over 400 on the season. 392 is what he's listed at, but he's been playing well, a junior. Yeah, you see him going to the wristband again. They have their offensive and defensive play calls on the wristband. Skied into shallow left center. Myers moving over. 
He'll make the catch for out number three. So Woodlawn strands a runner. We head to the second. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Can you see her greatness? When you attend her games, when you cheer her on, or when you participate in any way, you support your community and make it better, and you will see her greatness. Join us as we pledge to increase the visibility of women's sports in our communities. It makes a difference when we all are involved. At Everett Butte GMC, we proudly support our local female athletes and encourage you to do the same. See her greatness. Arkansas, what's in your attic? Find out what your heirlooms, antiques, and collectibles are worth. Join us for the filming of a brand new show, Arkansas Treasures. This special event happens at the Arkansas PBS Studios in Conway on August 5th and 6th. Tickets will go quickly, so guarantee your spot by calling or visiting our website. If your item and story are selected for filming, you may end up on our show. Your treasure may be worth more than you know. At Wendy's, we're focused on what matters. That's why we've made our hamburgers square. When you want to experience the delicious taste of Wendy's hamburgers, square's the beef. Oh, man. <laughs> Back here at Bear Stadium in Conway. Here you head to the top of the second inning. Kyle Deckelbaum, Kevin Bohannon with you and our Arkansas PBS Sports crew. A Woodlawn team looking for its sixth state championship in seven years, third straight. Yeah, 2019 was the only year they did not win it in this little streak they have going on right now. They've had this will be their second three-peat, you know, in that time. So, uh, Coach, and I, I, we were talking before the game today, Kyle, and the first time I really saw it was 2012 at the state tournament. And just watching them take infield before the game, they, they have two fungos out there. They got two coaches hitting, and they were off in six and a half minutes. You're allotted 10, which is pretty quick. But they went in six and a half, and it's just the machine. It's the program, the culture that Coach Richardson has built. Took over the Bears baseball program before the start of the 1994 season, just seven years after graduating from Woodlawn High School. And those early teams, he, he had some success, but it really wasn't to your point until about 2007 when he broke through. They make it to the state championship game. They lose to Parker's Chapel 11-7, but that was the launching pad. They won it all in 2008 as Trey Guthrie leads things off here for the Patriots. And we know the rest of the story. They have been on fire eight state championships since 2008. Yeah, and you look at you know, a 15-year span, 75, 80% of those years, Woodlawn has been in the state title game. Howard getting the outside corner there. Yeah, that's where he's lived so far most, most of the game, and that's... That's where they want to live. They, a lot of Woodlawn hitters, uh, they're not going to have the power to take it to the gap out there, so he's wanting them to roll over on ground balls. This one into left field. Weatherford moving over. He gets under it and makes the catch for out number one. Kyle, I've, I've coached on this field quite a few times, and this time of the day, it's really tough to pick up the ball. That twilight out there. Last year, we saw it in the state finals at Benton with, between Valley View and Harrison. We talked about it with Coach Allison the other day. You, you drop a twilight fly ball, uh, but it's really tough to pick up. So key is pick it up right off the bat. That way you can slide under it. This is Brady Bass, the first baseman. Good pitch. Yeah, he runs that two seam right over the outside corner, runs it back over, starts out of the strike zone and comes back in. It's going to be tough for the Patriot hitters to get on that baseball. We talked about Tommy Richardson, the legend in his own right for Woodlawn. How about the story for Palestine Wheatley's coach, Kevin Whitson? This is a guy who was a volunteer who started the year as the interim head coach Proved himself certainly over the year, and after their semifinal win, they announced to the team that Whitson got the full-time job. We talked to him before the game, and he talked about how emotional that moment was. 
Yeah, you, you can tell, and just talking to him right before the game today, and the superintendent, the, their new superintendent, of course, came down and told him after the game that they were hiring him as a full-time coach. That's something for a volunteer assistant to come in as an interim and build the culture in such a short period of time. So that, that's really big for him. He said the uh, superintendent, new superintendent, was the one who revealed to the team, and the team went nuts and just emotional. I, I think it's fair to say, I think even Coach Whitson would admit, you could tell he was feeling some nerves before the game, oh, yeah. and I think that's totally fair. First season in charge for sure. Good pitch. Strike number three. Strikeout number two on the day for Howard. We know Coach Whitson is definitely feeling nerves, but even Coach Richardson, with this being his 12th time here, he still has the nerves every time. And I talk to him each year. It's the same thing. He has nerves every time before the game. Well, he told you and I before the game, he didn't feel as many nerves when he played because right. he could contribute to the game itself. It's a little bit harder when you're not the one playing. Here's yeah. Ty Myers digging in, by the way. Makes total sense. Yeah, great job by Wilmoth right there, still in the strike. But yeah, you, it, it's kind of you, you're the puppet master, but you don't have control over the strings like you like you think you should. But at the end of the day, these are teenagers going out there and playing a kid's game. Sends this one into foul territory, and there's room for out number two. Good catch from Stover, the first baseman, shading over there. Yeah, a lot of foul ground here, Kyle, and that, that's the thing that, you've seen. Let me correct games. myself. That's out number yeah, three. Out number three, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we've had a lot of foul, foul territory balls to be caught today. So we saw it earlier today in the 4A state title game with Engel going into the right field line. Head to the bottom of the second after this. Centennial Bank is committed to you. Since our founding in 1999, we've become one of the nation's most trusted banks by remembering that you come first. By empowering our communities to reach their highest potential through our dedication to local charity, education, and exceptional service. Because we are proud to call Arkansas home. Banking with you in mind. Centennial Bank. Member FDIC. We never gonna stop. We never gonna stop. The Children's Clinic of Conway and Greenbrier is proud supporter of Arkansas PBS Sports. The Children's Clinic of Conway and Greenbrier serving Conway and surrounding areas with locations at 2505 College Avenue, Conway, and 10 Lois Lane in Greenbrier. Five, six, seven hitters for Woodlawn here in the bottom of the second. A scoreless game in this 2A championship in Conway. Dylan Butler, the third baseman, digging in. And the first pitch just missing the outside part of the plate. Yeah, Butler is leading uh, Woodlawn in average so far this season. He, he's been, and you like his size right there. He's a good rangy third baseman over there. Good, good hitter as well. 4-12 hitter fouls this back. The senior. Looks like he's got a little inside out swing like Derek Jeter going right there. He stayed inside that baseball really well. well I'm sure he would take the comparisons <laughs> to the captain. Hickman had a good top of the first. Struck out the first two batters he faced. Walked the next one and then got out of the inning with a pop out to left. Yeah, he's doing a really good job of mixing mixing the pitches. Of course, he's just a two-pitch mix guy, but if you got a really good curveball like that, you only, you only need to in high school baseball. He has missed upstairs, though. He has, and, you know, that, that could be a couple of things, uh, nerves, and then sliding off that mound as well. You can't get that plant foot uh, on, the, on your lead leg, and that could cause the ball to sail a little bit. How different is it to pitch off that turf? It's a lot different. I, I had to do it a couple of times at the end of my career, and it is something that it, it takes a little bit of getting used to, Kyle. Second walk there. It's a leadoff walk for the Bears, and that'll bring up Jace Bishop, the center fielder. 
a 358 average, 593 slugging. We may see him pitch at some point in this game, too. Yeah, like we mentioned in the pregame, 7-0 and in the season. He's the number two to Austin Howard. Uh, wouldn't be surprised right here if Coach Richardson dials up the bunt, trying to get a runner in scoring position uh, to get the Bears on the board. Swing it away. I've learned just about every time we try to guess something, <laughs> the complete opposite happens. Yeah, uh, you know. We, we were talking, and I was talking with Kyle Sutherland with, with Scorebook Live. He, he's my partner, does softball, and, you know, just about every time we pick something this year, it's been a curse. So uh, we'll, we'll just keep the prognostications at a minimum. Another big cut from Bishop. Uh, Bishop is a little excited right now. He's pulling head out a little bit. That front shoulder flies. You can't stay on the baseball. If he just stays on it, he can drive it in the opposite field gap and run for days out there. A Woodlawn team, remember, that is used to blowing their opponents out. Three run rule wins in the state tournament. And that hits the outside part of the plate there. Strikeout number three for Hickman. Yeah, Woodlawn, you talk about the state tournament run they had, Kyle, but during regionals as well, they semifinals and finals, they had run rule games. So their last five games, they've had five, six inning games. Yeah, 30 hits in three games. Four were home runs. Four went for extra bases in the region. This is Austin Howard, the pitcher. Runner on first, one down, scoreless game. In the bottom of the second inning in this 2A championship. A game that we started a little bit early, maybe 37 minutes, 35 minutes early or so. Try to beat what appears out to the west on the radar, but we won't focus on that. Right down the middle. Yeah, Hickman's doing a really good job of holding runner right now. Haven't had many runners so far. Of course, we only had the two walks and ha hasn't given up a hit. Good look at it. It's right center cut right at the kneecaps. That's where you want to live. All three strikeouts, by the way, for Hickman called strike three. Here's the one one. Throw down to second and it bounces away. That'll be a stolen base. Good job to back up on the throw there. But Woodlawn for the first time will get a runner in the scoring position. Yeah, the one thing the runner right there, they're reading first movement. So if they see leg lift, they're going and that's what gave him the jump right there. It was a, it was a good throw, a little low, but play that big hop, you might have had a shot at him. Tough hop to play for sure. Yeah, definitely. So a runner at second now for the Bears. Three and one on Austin Howard. Chance to help his own cause in this game as the starting pitcher for the Bears. Yeah, Hickman, Hickman has taken advantage of a, a little expanded strike zone right now, and he, he's definitely working the outside corners. So the second man aboard by Walk in this inning. And it's the third walk of the game for Hickman. Three walks, three strikeouts. So far, Kyle, in the state championship games, uh, the, the teams that have been able to take advantage of the walks and the errors are the ones that have won the ball. Games. You look yesterday with Harbor and Bentonville. Bentonville had bases loaded once. Uh, I know Felder had command issues you know, right in that three to five inning range, but they were only able to scratch out a run. So if Woodlock can take advantage of this right here, uh, they may get some runs on the board. Nobody uh, in the pan over there. They're going to stick with him for sure. P Arkansas PBS is the perfect keepsake from the game. Download free photos at myarpbs.org slash photos. That'd be a good keepsake for sure for some of these fans. So two on now, and it's Tate Hall digging in the second baseman. Hall had a home run in the semifinal win. He hit two doubles against Palestine Wheatley on March 23rd. Tell you what, Hall is another pitcher that Woodlawn has that can come in and fill up the zone. He's got a little velocity too. He's mid-80s right now. Chance to do some damage. Sends this into center field. Not going to be deep enough for the runners to score, or to advance, I should say. And so the runners hold at first and second, two down. 
Yeah, Hall got that just off the end of the bat right there. Uh, and you see that from a left-handed pitcher with Hickman. He's got that kind of backwards gyro turn. The ball has a good sinking action late there. Dylan Lunsford, the nine-hole hitter, the right fielder, with two down and two on. And for Palestine, really chance to get out of this suddenly. And the longer they hang around, you never know. That bunt is fouled away. A bunt with two outs. Bunt yeah, attempt. and we saw that in the first inning. Uh, pitcher, the hitter squared around the bunt. Kind of surprised me a little bit, but put pressure on the defense. That's the name of the game right here. If they put pressure on them, make them field the ball, throw the ball, and that's how you can make things happen. High arching pitch missing upstairs. Yeah, it seems like Hickman's kind of losing a little grip out there. We've seen a lot of high curveballs and getting back in the zone right here. He, he's been dotting up with his fastball a little bit more. Hickman looks back, swing and a miss. Kyle, it looks like he's almost got a like a secondary fastball that he kind of uses for a changeup that he just takes a little bit off of. It's got a little bit of sinking action to it. I've been impressed with the pitching that we've seen in this tournament. Swing and a miss. That'll do it. So, Palestine Wheatley and Hickman navigate out of trouble. And Woodlawn strands two. You're watching the Centennial Bake State Baseball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service, real people. This month on Arkansas PBS. I know your grandfather will never consent to me. Is it not perfectly dreadful, Harriet, to learn that our niece's honor is now suddenly lost? Fearfully romantic, though. Elizabeth! She's missing, and I'm worried sick. Mom, you don't believe me. You've got to stop all this nonsense. The world-famous thief. Father Brown's friend and nemesis is in trouble. Flambeau is now a killer. For once, I'm innocent. Only on Arkansas PBS. Let's take a look at our Arkansas PBS student all-star. It is Drew Grumbles from Little Rock Episcopal Collegiate, a senior pitcher with a 4.44 GPA. He will play for John Hopkins up in Baltimore. And that is uh, quite the powerhouse in Division Three baseball. And congratulations to Drew Grumbles, our Arkansas PBS student all-star. Yeah, I've had the privilege of, of working with Drew Grumbles, and he's got a younger brother, Hunter Grumbles, that still that will be at Episcopal for Coach Eddie Stevens next year. So, uh, yeah, proud of Drew, the way he's progressed over the last three years. Uh, will be a great pitcher at that level. If he's going to medical school at Johns Hopkins, I give him even more credit. Uh, that's right, yeah. Nine-hole hitter here is Blaine Brown. 4.44 GPA is not easy, especially at Episcopal Collegiate School. Yeah, no kidding. Far smarter than you and I, just trying to keep track of outs in this one. That's right. Brown squares up, pulls back. Yeah, not sure if, if Brown was looking to bunt right there, if that was just to kind of work ahead in the count. As Howard came out, uh, looks a little loose right there with his command. It's a Palestine Wheatley team. They're not flashy, Kevin. I mean, they don't, they don't, there's nothing overpowering on the mound, nothing overpowering at the plate. They're a solid one through nine team that kind of does everything well, but you know that that recipe they can win you a lot of games. Yeah, I was talking with Coach Steven too, uh, who the head coach at Carlisle, and they played them a couple of times this year in conference play. And that's the one thing he said. He said they're not going to do anything flashy. They're 
they don't have any just superstars out there, but they're going to do everything well. And that was the key to them making this run to the state championship game. Yeah, they don't have one player that's hit a home run this season. They hit 258 as a team. I do think it's amazing the fact that they have done this with only one senior. Yeah, and you've seen that with a couple of games so far. I think Harbor, they were low on seniors, and so with Lone Oak, of course, uh, with their big junior class. So a lot of teams that are in the state title game this year, I would not be surprised if we see them back at UCA next season. But Lone Oak has all that talent, even though oh they're my. juniors. I mean, yeah. those are future SEC players. This is a team that, as we mentioned, just sort of does everything well. Yeah, and you know them being in Class 2A, and I know they've been on the 3A, 2A line before, so being in Class 2A is right where they need to be, and they've played a lot of these teams in Central Arkansas really well. 3-0 pitch, and it's a four-pitch walk. Leadoff walk and a runner aboard for the second time for Palestine Wheatley. Our viewers may be asking, why go to a 3-0 breaking ball right there? Well, a lot of pitchers, when they get in trouble, when they, they to get a feel for the spin of everything, they'll go to their off speed, whether they have a curveball or a slider, just to get back in the zone. Now Howard coming off a one, two, three second. Did work around a hit and a walk as we get to the top of the order here. And Brody Parker, the shortstop, digs in. Yeah, you saw that pitch right there. He went back to the slider right there, caught just the bottom of the zone, brought it up just a little bit. So it looks like how we're starting to get the feel for it again. We spotlighted Parker at the top of the show. A freshman, 421 on base percentage. A couple triples, 18 RBI, 24 runs on the season. Lays down the bunt, goes foul. Yeah, really good looking freshman, Kyle. And usually your most athletic player on the team is playing shortstop or center field for you because you want to be solid up the middle. We've talked about with teams that you've seen before this season or already this weekend. And looks like Brody is one of those players that he's going to be a four year starter and possibly, you know, one of those kids that can be a three year all state player. Yeah, chance to maybe do something and make quite a run with their first year head coach, Kevin Whitson. Yeah, just with the culture that Whitson has built over the course of what, 24 games now, this is their 25th of the season, uh, give him an offseason with, with these young men to see what they can do, and uh, they will definitely be a team to be reckoned with next year. Yeah, first season, but he, he told us he's been around. He's coached travel ball. Right. He's coached legion ball. That pitch is upstairs. Looks like Howard's just kind of overthrowing a little bit right here. He's get get back to his game, get within himself, and settle down a little bit. That's what Wilmoth came, in, came out and told him a second ago. Wilmoth has done a good job defensively behind the plate. 2-2 pitch, lined, and it finds the gap. And so Parker gets aboard with a base hit that advances Brown to second. And Palestine Wheatley threatening here in the top of the third inning. Yeah, really good two-strike hitting right there by Medford. Howard had him one-two, went, went back to a fastball, caught too much of the plate on that two-seam. He drives it into left field. Brent Medford, the third baseman, struck out in his first at bat. Patriots with the chance to do, I think what some would think would be the impossible here, but boy, they got a chance to jump out for a lead here on the dynasty that is the Woodlawn Bears. Yeah, and Coach Whitson said, Hit their motto all season has been, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Showing bunt. Really good pitch right there by Howard. And this could be a slash situation. You know, they're, they're showing bunt. They want to get the runners, two runners in scoring position. But they want to see how Woodlawn reacts to the bunt situation right here. They're just trying to mess with Howard, if yeah. anything. This one popped into the air, shallow left center. And the catch is made by Weatherford. Runners will hold. Really good job by Weatherford taking control right there. That was in the what we call it in the middle of the Bermuda Triangle right there. Overcall communication is really big at certain parts of the field, and that's one of them. Uh, you saw the shortstop right there. He was retreating, but Weatherford came in. Great angle, great attack on the baseball. Big first out, it feels like, for Woodlawn. Weatherford covered a lot of ground calling everybody off there. 
Definitely, and you, and you have the infield fly rule in effect right here with runners on first and second, less than two outs. And the first pitch outside to Jacob Hickman, who in his first at-bat hit a triple. Yeah, really, they came into the big man last time, so the, expect Howard to work off the edge of the plate on the outside corner right here, and he did that, try to get that slider, backdoor slider in. We have not mentioned Hickman's mustache, by the way. It is next level 1980s. Fantastic. Good breaking ball in there for a strike, one and one. Hickman's got to be kicking himself on that one because that one just hung there. It's a good pitch, good strike, but Hickman, if, if it comes back in again, he's going to take advantage of that. All off speed so far to yeah. Hickman this time. Varner and Parson do up next behind Hickman. Brown at second, Medford at first. The pitch to Hickman lays off of it. Hickman doing a really good job of picking up spin right here. This is a key pitch for both sides. Great job by Wilmoth back there as well. Pitch to Hickman on the ground to second. And the throw to first in time. They get out of the inning. Four, six, three on the double play. And Palestine Wheatley strands two. What an opportunity there. So we remain scoreless. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. around to come to 9th Street just to see what it was like. I'm saying this was the mecca of entertainment in the South. We thought we was on top of the world. You know? Download the PBS video app or watch online. Can you see her greatness? When you attend her games, when you cheer her on, or when you participate in any way, you support your community and make it better, and you will see her greatness. Join us as we pledge to increase the visibility of women's sports in our communities. It makes a difference when we all are involved. At Everett Butte GMC, we proudly support our local female athletes and encourage you to do the same. See her greatness. What's in your attic? Get ready for Arkansas Treasures, a new program showcasing collectibles and antiques to be found throughout Arkansas. Reserve your spot today for a professional evaluation and chance to be in the show. Scoreless game heading to the bottom of the third inning here at Bear Stadium. Ian Conway, good to have you along with us here on a Friday night. Excellent crowd trying to beat the weather. And a little bit of a surprise shaping up so far to see Palestine Wheatley making its first ever championship appearance, taking on the dynasty that is Woodlawn, scoreless, heading to the third. It's the top of the order here for the Bears. Brayden Jones, the shortstop, to lead things off, followed by Weatherford and Stover. Yeah, Brayden Jones hit a grand slam uh, during the regional tournament. Has a little pop at the top of the lineup. Fouls that one away. Really good flat path to the baseball right there. You can see that Jones knows how to use all parts of the field. And Howard and Bishop, the top two arms for sure for Woodlawn, and then Jones and Hall. Pitch inside. Yeah, Hall is one of those young men, and you saw it right there, especially you know coming from shortstop Jones. He that the turn by both of those young men in the middle that was a really good turn. It's not it wasn't Peyton Holt like <laughs> like the other night against Vanderbilt, mm -hmm. you know, but the really good four six three double play turn. Pops this one up in the air. Shortstop third baseman both calling for it. it's the shortstop Parker that makes the catch out number one. 
Ooh, that looked dangerous for just a second there. Yeah, and you talk about overcall. You got overcall right there with it. There's the umpires, James Bryant. You see behind home plate, Sean Sullins at first and Josh Zuber at third. Yeah, I've had the opportunity to work with Josh Zuber quite a few times. Then James Bryant, he's called quite a few finals. I know I've seen him in, at Baum a few times. Breaking ball, just missing upstairs to Garrett Weatherford, who struck out in his first at bat. Hey, you talk about that fly ball, Kyle, that, that, the overcall communication. It's shortstop's ball if he calls him off, but a little, little too close for comfort. Yeah, sure, for a split second there. We've talked about, Kevin, the, the dynasty that is Woodlawn. You think about some of the dynasties in the state. PA, certainly in football. Parkview in the 90s in basketball with Charles Ripley. Yeah. I mean, Woodlawn baseball, the, the numbers put them right up there in that sort of Arkansas high school sports history. That That's a that's a Mount Rushmore that I think Woodlawn is on right now. Yeah, and if you think about it, PA just started theirs in 03 with Coach Kelly. Yeah. And of course, Coach Lucas has got it going right now. So you think about during that time period, the last 20 years, that's where Woodlawn has been during that time period. They've made their run in a short period of time. Of course, I was around Coach Ripley back in the 90s when my dad was at McClellan and got to see what they were all about. It's all about culture, Kyle. Weatherford fouls this back. Weatherford may have been kicking himself on that one. That kind of looked like ball four may have been a little out, but maybe a little out, maybe a little up, but 3-2 count for Hickman right here. Key pitch. Now down Highway 63, you don't necessarily get the attention of uh, West Little Rock or John Barrow Road, but boy, their numbers put them up there. Good job staying alive here. That's going to get out of play. That's exactly right. And you talked about it earlier in the game, Kyle, that you know the first few years, and, and Coach Richardson had coached in Legion state championships, but it was a little bit different in high school, what he said. So you know, it took him 13 years to get to the state title game, yeah. and now you know since then he's been to 12 of them. And how amazing is that? How often do you get 13 years to, yeah. to turn around a program? Speaks to the importance of patience. Look at what he's done. Yeah, and, you know, he's building his own coaching tree. And, of course, a lot of the assistant coaches that he's had, you know, the three that he has have been there for a, a good tenure. But Jacob Richardson, his oldest son, is at West Memphis right now. He took England to the semifinals a few years ago. 3-2 pitch into left field. Myers moving over. Out number two. That was a good battle. Yeah, Hickman's done a really good job of settling down right now. Getting back in the zone, not overdoing it out there, and it seems to be cruising right along. See that 330 sign out there. It's a it's a big stadium. Bear Stadium in Conway. 330 to left and right, 400 straight to center. Yeah. If you're going to get a ball out here, it's going to be right down the line, especially for these high school hitters. We saw it with Jackson Engel earlier today. For Lono. Yep. You get a ball out here in the gap, you, you've really got an own one. Owen oh, Stover pops this one out of play. Walked in his first at bat. Yeah, it takes a lot to get one out of here. We were talking with UCA baseball coach Nick Harlan before the game, and he was talking about how excited he was to have this here. He said this is great for the community, loved the energy, and he knew, listen, the schedule would have to work around his team. And yeah. as we mentioned, the Bears played in between that early game and this one. As Stover sends this one to third, Medford moves right along the chalk. Adjusts and makes the catch for out number three. So three up, three down for Woodlawn. We head to the fourth. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball and Softball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Centennial Bank is committed to you. Since our founding in 1999, we've become one of the nation's most trusted banks by remembering that you come first. By empowering our communities to reach their highest potential, through our dedication to local charities, education, and exceptional service. Because we are proud to call Arkansas home. Banking with you in mind, Centennial Bank, member FDIC. 
Not a bad investment. <laughs> that's like a 6,900 percent increase. Now that's money well spent. Excellent. Not a bad investment. Yeah. Your investment in this PBS station brings Antiques Roadshow into your home each week. That's a good investment. Call, text, or go online to give now. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Bob's got a brand new bag. I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> Let me take you for a ride on the baseline. Let's go! Hotel accommodations and sponsorship for the 2023 Arkansas High School State Baseball and Softball Championship broadcast provided by Hilton Garden Inn at 803 Amity Road in Conway and Home 2 Suites at 820 Building Drive in Conway. Kyle Beckelbaum, Kevin Bohannon, and our Arkansas PBS Sports crew in a scoreless game to the top of the fourth here in Conway, Palestine Wheatley, the Cinderella story, perhaps of this entire baseball championships, going toe to toe so far with the dynasty that is Woodlawn. Yeah, Kyle, they had the, the biggest upset of any classification state tournament in that semifinal win over Episcopal. It was eight to three. And they did what they've done all season long, play good fundamental baseball. Episcopal, they had Drew Grumbles on the mound. He walked a few. Then they committed a few errors, got out early, and then hung on for the win. That's their recipe for a win. Four, five, six hitters. Austin Varner, the catcher, to lead things off here for Palestine Wheatley. He fouls the first pitch back to the screen. Howard remains out there. And for Palestine Wheatley, they've stranded two runners in the first. They stranded two in the third. They have had their opportunities in this game. Yeah, Kyle, first three innings, each team has only had one, one two, three inning. Breaking ball hits the bottom part of the plate there. Yeah, looked like a good change up from Howard right there that caught the bottom of the zone. Austin Varner, a 413 on base percentage, 14 RBI. The sophomore catcher, I see him pitch as well. 31 and two thirds innings pitch this season. I always love when a catcher is also a pitcher. Yeah. You're talking about during the low note game today, Steel Leaves was offered as a catcher slash pitcher by Coach Matt Hobbs at the University of Arkansas, but I think he's got a he's got a future either way, yeah. in, in my opinion. Well, he was impressive on the mound. Yeah. I think it's clear he may not have had his best stuff earlier, right. and he was still that good. Yeah, 11 strikeouts. 1-2 pitch. Got him. Strikeout number three for Howard. A little less emphatic punch out right there by James Bryant back there, but definitely a great pitch right off the outside corner by Howard. Now batting DH, James Parson. James Parson, the designated hitter in this game. Wide out to short in his first at bat. Kyle, you keep talking about Palestine Wheatley. They only have one senior, but the number of freshmen and sophomores that they have on the field right now. Tough hop there, gets into left field, into center field, I should say. And a runner aboard here for Palestine Wheatley. Yeah, that ball hit with a lot of top spin right there and just in between hop, either as a shortstop, middle infield, any infielder, you want to get that short hop or big hop, and that was in between right there and just ate Jones up. We've seen some funny bounces on this turf. You just don't expect to see it always on turf. But we've seen some. Yeah, it, it's a softer turf, so it's got a little bit of give, and you'll see some slow ground balls, and I know they, they've laid some bunts down as well, but the turf really just kind of eats it up. Now Trey Guthrie, the center fielder. You mentioned just one, one, two, three inning. Palestine Wheatley with a runner on and one out here. The 1-0 pitch, fouled away. Howard working the top of the zone right there with his breaking ball, and tough to get on that pitch, but as you saw a second ago, Parsons did a really good job of getting on top of it in zone and, and hitting a line drive. That's what you want to do with, with Howard. We talked about that Episcopal game. How about the, the way, you know, they trailed 3 nothing in that game. Reeled off a six-run fourth. Good job by Wilmoth to stand up there. They came back in that one, battling Woodlawn here. Yeah, it seems like they've been you know, 
They played Greenland, which was the host up there. And Rising in round one didn't have much trouble with them, but to beat the host at their play, and the number one seed at that Greenland had been ranked in our Super 7 poll uh, over the last seven, eight weeks. It was a big win. This one into foul territory gets out of play. Guthrie doing a really good job of, of controlling the bat right now in, in the zone. Howard's shown the ability to throw to all four quadrants of the plate, so he, he's covering it up, definitely. Good job by Wilmoth again. Wilmoth doing a good job right there, showing some leadership. The, the junior catcher going out there, talking about, look at him, talking about his arm slot right there. Sometimes Howard Kent doesn't have a feel for it. Wilma sees it, so he's being the on-field coach right there. And you talk about extensions of the coaching staff. Jaden Wilma's done a really good job of that this season for Woodlawn. Came out and had a few words with his pitcher. Guthrie flied out to left in his first at-bat. Full count, one away. Upstairs. Two men on now for the Patriots. Kyle, we've talked about key situations all weekend and get a couple of runners on with no outs right here. Let's, or excuse me, one out. And let's see if Coach Whitson dials up something. I'm surprised we haven't seen a mound visit yet either by, yeah. by Coach Richardson or his staff. Uh, they're, they're letting Howard work through it. And of course, Wilmoth's been out there a couple of times to try to settle his big man down. That pitch is low and away to Brady Bass, the first baseman who struck out in his first at-bat. And has a chance here to get what would be the first big hit of this game. At least the first timely hit. It's in there, one and one. Yeah, we talked in the, in the pregame show about Howard and just the command he's had all season. Already got four walks today and you know, just needs to get back in the zone. Wilma, like I said a second ago, did a really good job of talking to him about his arm slot and his release point. This one flied into shallow right center. It's the right fielder Lundford that makes the catch. And that's a big second out in this inning. You and I were talking to Coach Josh Allison from Valley View the other day and their first game with, with Little Rock Christian earlier this year, talking about hitting the ball hard and sometimes they just fall and sometimes they don't. Palestine Wheatley, they, they're hitting it right over the infield with Woodlawn's outfield's done a really good job of getting a break on the ball right now and hasn't allowed anything to drop yet. Safe to say that's the strength that this Woodlawn team is the outfield, right? A absolutely, a lot of speed out there and they've done a great job on angles and their jumps have been superb. Ty Myers is the designated hitter. Now we're trying to keep this game scoreless into the bottom of the fourth. Woodlawn's, their outfield depth so far, and I know a lot of uh, our, our viewers can't see it on the field right now, but their outfield depth has been key so far. They're not playing really deep knowing that this team hasn't been a really power hitting. That's program. a good look yeah, there. A really good look right there. So the Patriots have not been a power hitting team this year, so it's going to take a ball in the gap to get a runner in. What do you think if you're Palestine Wheatley and you see that? You, you, you know you're being challenged to try to hit the ball out there. Yeah, and, and a lot of teenagers, they, they feel it's a shot to their ego a little bit. They tend to power up some, uh -huh. but the better hitters just stay within themselves and just hit line drives. Rio pitch missing. It's a four-pitch walk, and it's going to be bases loaded here for the Patriots and the nine-hole hitter, Blaine Brown. Walk number four on the day from Howard, and what an opportunity here for the Patriots. Yeah, bases loaded right here. If nine hole hitter, we talked about in, in softball earlier, uh, grab it and P Ridge, the, the bottom of the lineup, seven, eight, nine, were, were the key to getting that win. So Blaine Brown could be really big right here and driving in the first runs for Palestine Wheatley. Now you see a mound visit, by the way, as you mentioned. 
Gives Coach Whitson a chance to talk to his guys as well. Scoreless game here in the fourth. Griffin Leggett Funeral Home is a proud supporter of Arkansas PBS Sports. Serving the Conway area, located at 1751 Dave Ward Drive in Conway. Griffin Leggett, proudly serving our communities in Central Arkansas since 1936. Blaine Brown with the bases loaded for the Patriots. Trying to get on the board first in this game and pull off what would be an absolute stunner. The first pitch from Howard, it's a low strike call. Tell you what, they, they've gotten that low strike today, but it's been consistent. They It, it hasn't been one way or the other. Uh, the umpire behind the plate, James Bryant, he's been calling that both ways today down there. You see Parson, Guthrie, and Myers on base. Pitch, big cut. You can see Brown right there. He wish, wish he had that one back. That was a little out of the zone. Wanting to do a little too much. Not just what we were talking about there, being challenged a little yeah. bit. Yeah. 0 oh, 2. Right idea. Yep. Yeah. Howard the, Wilmoth was set out there, and he, Howard threw it exactly where Wilmoth wanted him to, maybe to get another chase. Would not surprise me if he came back in on his hands right here. Or he can go to that slider that he's had working off the outside corner of the plate out there. Looks like a fastball. One, two is popped in the air, stays in the infield, and how about Howard making the catch himself? to strand three Patriots. Palestine Wheatley has stranded seven in this game. It remains scoreless. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. What exactly did they get wrong? That Arkansas values our teachers. The House and Senate thought was very disingenuous. Arkansas Week is celebrating 40 years of public affairs programming. From news analysis to election and legislative coverage, see why Arkansas Week has become a staple for thousands of viewers every week. Tune in Fridays and Sundays and stay up to date the rest of the week by signing up for our newsletter at myarpbs.org slash sign up. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car, to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service. Real people. We never gonna stop. We never gonna stop. Hideaway Pizza is a proud supporter of Arkansas PBS Sports, serving Conway in the central Arkansas area at 1170 South Amity Road in Conway. Still scoreless in this one to the bottom of the fourth inning. And it'll be four, five, six hitters for Woodlawn, who just navigated out of trouble again. Patriots stranding the bases loaded. Hickman remains out there, the pitcher for Palestine Wheatley. And it's Jaden Wilmoth, the catcher, digging in. Kyle, we've seen a lot of fly balls so far this game, especially for Woodlawn. They've had five fly outs. I know Coach Richardson has talked to his his hitters about staying on top of the baseball and hitting it hard. Breaking ball in there to Wilmoth, 0-2. Pickman's done a good job all game, and seems like he's still got a really good spin on that breaking ball, and he can drop it in there. It's kind of got a lot, a lot of good late fight to it. Pickman's coming off a 1-2-3 inning. He gets Wilmoth to chase a high pitch there, and a collision. That catch is made. <laughs> Hickman comes away with it there. Ball on the mound, and usually as a coach, you tell your pitcher, get out of the way and let your infielders do the fielding. But Hickman thought, hey, I got it right here. I, I'm in control of things. Let me take it. 
Look at this. Hickman's a big man. He if, if he's going to take it, I'm going to let him. Yeah. I'm not going to run into you, especially if I'm. <laughs> <laughs> if you're Medford, you're like bouncing off of him yeah, there. Medford and Hickman, there's a good size disparity there. Yes, there. Dylan Butler now the hitter. Yeah, you, you, you got to call that, though. Yeah, I mean, that's, you do. That's overcall. We talk about communication all game. That's where you got to have good overcall communication. Butler walking his first at bat. I don't think Hickman saw it off the bat very well because he was looking up and then he was looking at his infielders to see if they were going to call something and nobody did. So he thought, I'll take it. Medford's like a shifty running back running into a linebacker there. Palestine Wheatley's run the double wing in the past. It's like a pulling guard <laughs> run into that wing back. Well, 2 1 now to Butler. Looks like Woodlawn hitters are really anxious up there. I mean, they're just, I mean, they've scored a lot of runs. You talk about the regional 30 runs, 30 hits, and they're just, they're not staying in the zone. They've chased balls out of the strike zone quite a bit today. Upstairs to load the count. Smart of Hickman. He got Wilma to go up there, and then, of course, Butler went up there again to swing at him, and he's going to go right back after it. How about the way both these pitchers have navigated out of some trouble in this game? They've done a really good job. Both of them have. 3-2 pitch. It's going to be out of play. Tell you right, Hickman right now is really setting it up really well. He's gone fastball up and out of the zone quite a bit. Don't be surprised if he drops in that curveball here in the next pitch or two. 3-2 count. Tried it. Missed yep. outside. That's the fourth walk allowed from Hickman. Four strikeouts, four walks in this game. Yeah, Woodlawn. Really good offensive team, no matter what classification you look at, and they just really have not been able to square Hickman up at all today. A 30 and 3 team, 12 and 0 in the 8 2 A, and this is Jace Bishop, the center fielder. The lefty with a runner on first. Just missing the outside third. Really like Bishop's setup right there. He has a really good swing. Problem first at bat, he was pulling that head out. Shoulder was flying out quite a bit. I'm sure he's going to get back to fundamentals right here. Don't be surprised if you see him go opposite field. Bishop, a 358 average, 593 slugging. He's the guy, by the way, who pitched a three hitter against Palestine Wheatley when they played back on March 23rd. Catcher doing a good job of going right back out to Hickman, getting back in the zone after a 2-0 count. Just walked a batter, getting back in the zone a little bit. Of course, he was working on that outside corner, trying to nibble a little bit. Woodlawn's rolled over quite a few times. Try to get him to do it again. Barner gives him the signs. Boy, just hitting the outside part of the plate there. Bishop caught looking in his first at-bat in the second. Yeah, he knows he has to cover up that outside corner right now. And first time up to bat, he got caught looking out there. He's going to cover it up, especially with 2-1 count. Look at that thing. That is next level. That's Palestine Wheatley's finest jewelry. That is going to be doing neck exercises. <laughs> 3-1 pitch to Bishop. Low bounces in the dirt. Gets away. And so Woodlawn now with two on. Back-to-back -back walks by Hickman right there. Got to wonder if a little fatigue is setting in. 
humid night out there. Of course, the temperatures hasn't been too bad, but maybe a little bit of fatigue setting in right now for the young lefty. He's going to face Austin Howard. And the big chain. Oh, there's, there's a bottom part to it. <laughs> there it is. Got the Patriots symbol on there. The Patriots turnover chain. <laughs> that one gets away. Both runners are going to advance, and suddenly two runners in scoring position now for Woodlawn. And our friend with the chain not so happy. <laughs> Coach Richardson talking to his base runner right now, Dylan Butler, about how far the ball has to kick for him to take advantage of a, of a pass ball, wild pitch to score right here. Well, you got to stay in it there. Would you rather be with the guy with the chain or the guy with no buttons on? <laughs> Open shirt. He's got it going right now. He's excited. I'd, I'd rather, probably rather be with the guy with the chain, Kyle. <laughs> you and me both. Meantime, Hickman is in danger of three straight walks here. Good pitch in there. It is, by the way, starting to sprinkle just a little bit. We were warned that weather's coming, so we started this game a little early. Good shot of the sky there. We'll play through the rain. Just don't want anything more than that. That pitch is up high. It's 3-1. and one. Yeah, we talked to AAA executive director Lance Taylor before the game. They, they really want to get this game in tonight with UCA playing another home game tomorrow, and we have 5A and 3, 3A and 5A at 4 and 7 tomorrow, so the only other option is to play Sunday afternoon, and they do not want to do about that. that. Yeah. 3 1 pitch here with one away, swing and a miss to load the count. See Hickman, three and a third so far, 70 pitches, four strikeouts. Neither pitcher has had what you would call an efficient outing but they've navigated away from trouble. That one misses. It is three straight walks to load the bases for the Bears. Yeah, you want to stay around that max 15 pitch per inning mark, and I know that I keep going back to the low note game today because Steel Leaves was so efficient through six innings. He had 70 pitches through those six innings. That's a little over 11 per inning. So right now they've got to settle the young man down. Uh, I'd be surprised if base is loaded right here. Coach Richardson really on his team to make something happen. Pitch runner at first. And you see Coach Whitson out there. Our two friends cheering him on just as well. Base is loaded for the Bears. Courtesy runners number 18, Jackson Rainey. Woodlawn had one left on base in the first, two in the second. And Tate Hall, the second baseman, with the chance to get the first timely hit in this one. Base is loaded. Scoreless game. One away here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Swing and a miss. Butler's on third. Bishop on second, Howard on first for the Bears. Kyle, they did a study a long time ago that after a coach visit, 85% of the time the pitcher throws a strike. How about two of them? Pickman really settled back in the zone right there. I was, I was surprised if he didn't go out of the out of the windup, but he stayed in the stretch right there. That's what he seems to be most comfortable out of. You see Butler, Bishop, Howard. Hall in the batter's box with one away. It's got to be good luck. Yeah, hey, <laughs> get the get the strikeout chain going. One, two, sent deep to center field. It may be deep enough. Runner is going to tag. Here's the throw home. It is not in time, and Woodlawn is on the board first in this one. Dylan Butler scoring the first run right there. Tate Hall did a great job of getting the ball. Of course, Hickman had been working up in the zone, but Tate Hall did a great job of getting enough of the baseball to get it deep enough to center field. 
Another look here. Deep enough. Guthrie gets it in, made a pretty good throw there. Made a little bit closer. Yeah, Guthrie's got a good arm out there. And next pitch swinging is Lunsford. And that one falls. Well, the right fielder Worley didn't see it. Two runs are going to score for the Bears. We talked about it earlier, Kyle. Twilight, part of the day. The outfielders could not see the baseball off the bat. And it just landed out there in the Bermuda Triangle. Next thing you know, Woodlawn's up three to nothing. Bishop and Howard coming in to score on a ball that disappeared into the Conway Knight. And it's a three nothing Woodlawn lead. Well, you feel for Palestine Wheatley so close to getting out of this inning and keeping it a one run game when you are such a big underdog in this one. You feel for the Patriots yeah, there. You do, and Dylan Lunsford did a great job of looking to go to second right out of the box. Didn't hold up at first base, and you saw Coach Richardson give him an, an attaboy for good hustle play right there by the young man. Top of the order, Braden Jones, the shortstop. Brad attack on, a couple more, but the runner still in scoring position. That's one of those where the official score, it's going to be scored as a hit, even though it was a mental error, so to speak, but nobody touches the baseball, it's going to drop as a hit. And it, it landed right where it needed to. This one, hard hit to left, caught for out number three, but not before the Bears get three on the board, and Woodlawn leads it 3-0 through four. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. This month on Arkansas PBS. The more time I spend in nature, I realize how fragile everything is. Give nature a chance and it'll come right back. That's what we're asking for, is to give the right world a chance. The mystery ship thought Titanic would, would not sink. How could any ship leave a ship, especially of Titanic size, in distress? Only on Arkansas PBS. Can you see her greatness? When you attend her games, when you cheer her on, or when you participate in any way, you support your community and make it better, and you will see her greatness. Join us as we pledge to increase the visibility of women's sports in our communities. It makes a difference when we all are involved. At Everett Butte GMC, we proudly support our local female athletes and encourage you to do the same. See her greatness. Back Conway shaping up to be a little bit of a stunner. Both these pitchers working out of trouble. You see Howard here getting a big fly out. Hickman has pitched well at times as well. Both these pitchers have certainly shown an ability to get out of trouble. Palestine Wheatley has had their chances. They have stranded seven in this game. And in the fourth, this is the one that really hurts Palestine Wheatley. They strand the bases loaded. And then Woodlawn finally getting on the board there. And you see this one, that's where you really feel for the Patriots. Falls in front, two run score, and suddenly now a three nothing Woodlawn lead. Palestine Wheatley hanging around, hanging around so, so close. And in it enough to believe it when you're such an underdog. And then Woodlawn suddenly up 3 0. So now, how does Palestine Wheatley respond? Well, you know, Kyle, we talked about earlier, this is not a power hitting team, so they got to chip back one at a time. They, you can't get a three run home run. That's a start driven deep to left. A good catch by Myers on the run. Myers, great jump off the bat. He, They've had trouble when the balls get above the lights. That was a good line drive, as we saw at the end of the first inning, or into the last inning. So if the ball's line drive at you, you can see it a little bit better. Got a hold of that one. Might have been out in some high school parks around the state. Good run by Myers, and now
Sheck swing. Medford. Yeah. Medford right there. Check swing. It was called by the home plate umpire right there. He got the call. Didn't have to go down to first base. Medford is 0 for 2 in this game. A strikeout and a fly out to left. Austin Howard looking to work his second one, two, three inning of the night. Got it earlier in the second inning. Oh, that went inside, hit him. First hit batter as the rain starting to come down a little bit harder here in Conway. Yeah, you got to wonder if maybe that one slipped out a little bit. They're going to be switching baseballs out quite a bit right here. And hey, what about playing on what you mentioned is kind of a soft turf? Well, as you see, the, the the chain has made its way over to his counterpart there. Yeah. That, that chain, by the way, came back to bite Palestine Weebler. Yeah, and you, you got the young man that's got the no buttons right now. He's got the chain. Maybe they're trying to change up their luck a little bit. Uh, but, you know, playing on the turf, Kyle, and these guys have molded cleats, so it's the best thing they can have next to spikes. If you're playing in turf shoes out there right now, you're going to be slipping around a little bit, but it looks like a lot of have the molded cleats that they need. This is Jacob Hickman. Watches strike one. Howard's giving Hickman a d steady dose of off-speed slider curveball combination after that first inning triple. Swing and a miss. That's a really good pitch right there. It just falls out of the bottom of the zone. It's, it's still a strike if Hickman does not swing. It just falls off the table right there, right at the end. Good, sharp action to it late. Coming up on the 90-minute mark of this one, a game that we started about 35 minutes early to try to beat what we think is behind this rain. 1-2, high and outside. Howard went with the 0-2. Circle change, try to get it to run off the plate out there. Then it goes right back to the breaking ball. They're not giving Hickman any hard stuff right here. Hickman had that triple in the first. Four, six, three. Double play in the third. Two, two, missing inside. Yeah, it's one of as a coach, top three pet peeves is going 0-2 and you hit a batter, 0-2, you walk them on four pitches. Th those are two of the top three right there. It's still though for the Patriots, you got to feel like you, know, you played this team back in March, you got run ruled. Bears had 12 hits. You're hanging around here. You're, you're down three and hunting. Yeah, yeah. Th they feel, and that was the thing coming into this game is, Coach Whitson made these young men believe that they belong here. And yes, it's a David versus Goliath matchup. You got a dynasty versus a first timer. But these young men believe that they belong here. And that's that's a key. That's half of the battle right there. 3-2. Fouled away. Hickman staying alive. Yeah, Hickman's once you want out of your three-hole hitter, usually in, in high school baseball, your two-hole or three-hole is going to be your, your best hitter that can handle the bat. In 0-2 count, he's battled back, worked at 3-2, and fought off a couple of close pitches right there. Inside, he walked him. No well, back-to-back walks from Howard. That's the fifth, or check that sixth walk on the deck. Great at bat by Hickman. Great, great job. So runners at first and second now for the Patriots. It's Medford on second and Hickman on first. Got a courtesy runner 
Number 16, Lane Westbroad comes in for Hickman. Austin Varner, the catcher. 0 for 1 with a walk. Big lead at second. Oh, it looked like Howard just slipped there. Yeah, that's what we were talking about earlier with I did get information earlier from a good friend of mine that Woodlawn actually does have a turf mound, so they're used to it, but Ooh. not with rain. Yeah, that, that could have been dangerous right there for the young pitcher. That's scary when you see that. Yeah, you see a lot of ankles and knees. You talk about during, during football season playing on turf and the ACLs and all that. The the Nile Davis Liz Frank fracture back in the day. But yeah, it's tough and there's there's a pad underneath that turf that is rubber. So there's a little bit of give, thank goodness. 2-0 pitch. When Howard has missed today, he's missed to that glove side. He's flying a little open, Kyle, and that's that's what's causing that to happen right now. Uh, he, he's always missing to his glove side. Three straight walks now to load the bases full of Patriots. Can't imagine that Coach Richardson, they've already made one mound visit. Uh, it looks like they're going to let it go right now, but. Yeah, look at the rain there. Yeah. It's coming down right now. At least the temperature's nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, Coach Richardson certainly has a way with this guy. He's a guy who has been out there since 1994 as the coach at his alma mater. As successful a coach as you'll find in baseball. For a copy of any of the state championship games, go to mnmproductions.net to place your order. Two fan bases that certainly will want to remember this for different reasons. For Woodlawn, it'd be their ninth state championship, third straight, six and seven years. You see Tommy Richardson there. You know, he, he has talked about all season Kevin, how do we figure out to get the next one? Yeah. He got his 700th win this year. It was a 19-0 win over Dumas. He didn't even know about it. He said, I got a signed baseball with the number 700 on it, as if, yeah. so what? I called him after the game and said, congratulations, coach. And he's like, yeah, I guess. He said, I, yeah, I didn't even know about it. Next thing you know, they're bringing out a baseball that has number 700 on it. So I've got a baseball now with 700 on there. So. That's just, he's always focused on the next one. How do we get the next one? Bases full of Patriots here for James Parson, the designated hitter, who is one for two in this game. This is what you want. Of course, a, one out right now with the bases loaded. Middle of your order up. Parsons had a really good hit earlier this game. Drove it to left field. Medford. Hickman and Varner were the ones to get on base. Parson, see the rain glistening off his helmet. The pitch from Howard. Now he's having a tough time finding the plate at the moment. Yeah, it, it's about making adjustments at this point. He's always he's missing to the same spot every time. You saw Jaden Wilmoth, you know, kind of mouth to him, you know, make the adjustment, make the adjustment. That's what he needs. And Wilmoth will set up a little further inside right now. He misses, and the Patriots are going to get on the board here. It's a 3-1 game, a bases loaded walk, four walks in a row. And yeah, it looks like they're going to be making a, a pitch and change right here. And, of course, the high school rule is you have three visits. Uh, it's, it's not the two per inning anymore, so... On the third visit, you got to pull the pitcher, and it looks like Coach Richardson is going to make a change. 
So 3-1, Palestine Wheatley on the board, and now with the base is loaded. We'll see who's coming in to pitch for the Bears when we come back. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. What is it you're looking for this time? The answer to a riddle. I'm so close to cracking the case. It's very Agatha Christie. This is just beginning. And then we can see it operate. And she has a surprise, of course. There it comes. $10,000? Are you serious? I am serious. Oh, you're kidding. No, I'm not. Oh. <laughs> Your investment in this PBS station brings Antiques Roadshow into your home each week. Thanks for making it possible. Welcome back to Conway. Rain coming down a little bit harder, and it's going to be Stover, Owen Stover, to come in and pitch the senior who takes over for Howard, who has navigated out of trouble but walked four batters in a row, and that's how the Patriots just scored their first run. 3 1 game, and the bases remain loaded, full of Patriots. Kyle Stover on the year is 36 and a third innings pitched. He's five and one on the season. So he, uh, the starters that they have, he's got the third most innings behind Howard and Bishop. He's pitched in 11 games and made eight starts. It closes the book on Austin Howard, four and a third, three hits, seven walks, three strikeouts. Both pitchers have shown a propensity for navigating out of trouble neither was you know as we've said what we do you would call efficient yeah. at times they but it, you know at the moment right now you certainly don't blame Howard who was having a little bit of trouble with that plant foot that's right and he seemed just to be sliding off of it a little bit that was the thing and that could have been causing him to miss out on that glove side to the outside part of the plate you know and coach Richardson's message right now to Stover is come in throw strikes you've got one strike you have infield fly rule in effect so you've got a couple things working in your favor right here. If you get a ground ball, you got that middle infield. That's really good. 3-1 game. Base is loaded. Stover comes into a high pressure situation here in this 2A championship. Yeah, Howard will be the designated hitter now. Richardson had him listed as the pitcher and designated hitter. So they have moved. Number 20 over to first base. Okay, and this is Guthrie stepping in. So they, they've left, they just switched out Stover and Howard. Howard will be at first base now with Stover on the mound. Makes it easy for us, an easy yep. switch there. Big moment for Stover just coming in. Good breaking ball to get ahead 0-2. Yeah, that's what you want. Come in, pound the zone. Really good first pitch strike. Get ahead of the batter 0-2. Now he's in control right now. Craig got through the center fielder 0 for 1 with a walk. That one missing outside. Oh, you saw Stover there with some of the same issues. Yeah, great job by Jaden Woolmouth back there. Very athletic young man. You can see him get to that. That ball was outside the batter's box in the left hand. He's made some great defensive plays. Yeah, nothing's going to get by him. Uh, he does a great job. He's got, and you talk about having a soft glove back there. Everybody says be a wall. I always tell my catchers be a pillow, be soft, have soft hands back there. Pitch foul back. That's a good way to put it. I like that. I'm trying to get that to catch on. It just hasn't so far. <laughs> this is a good place to yeah. start here. Guthrie, the tall center fielder. Gets a piece of it, and it's foul. 
Great pitch there by Stover. That big 12-6 curveball. Got a little loop. Is not as hard as what Howard was throwing his slider at. So you got a little. You got a chance to adjust as long as those as the Patriot hitters don't get out on their front foot. They can keep their hands back and drive it. Base is loaded for the Patriots. One, two to Guthrie. Fouls it back to stay alive. Stover's got the locks going out there. He does. He might be mistaken for a Springdale Harbor player with the, that's but right. that's natural gold locks right there. The bleach hair. I, yeah, yesterday. I can appreciate it. He's got the natural golden locks going. A little sunshine action for you. We had the reveal yesterday. You could see one player's hair, and then suddenly you saw them all. Ooh. Well, that one didn't look good. It gets away, and a run's going to score, and it's 3-2. They called a balk. That's what was called. It wasn't a natural motion. You have to deliver the baseball, and that's what was called right there. You saw Stover kind of pause a little bit and then throw it. Great job by the umpiring crew to nail that one. That Get the Patriots' second run across. Yeah, take a look here. Oftentimes when it looks that unnatural, he called for that ball. Could have been called two ways right there. The pitcher didn't look like he gained ground going towards third base. Looked like that plant foot gained a little bit too much ground going towards home plate. In the meantime, this is suddenly a one-run game. Yeah, with one out, anything could happen. Now, you, now your double play is out of order because you got runners at second and third. You see Wilmoth out there to talk to Stover. Guthrie facing a 1-2 count. This is, listen, everything had to go right for Palestine Wheatley to compete with Woodlawn. I think that's fair that's to right. say. Yep. This is the kind of inning that they needed. Yeah, you needed Palestine Wheatley to come in and play their A game and Woodlawn to be off a little bit. Swing and a miss. A strikeout number one for Stover. A big second out of this inning. Great pitch right there. Look, it was out of the zone, but effective. That's what you want. He was effectively wild, as we like to call it. So now Brady Bass with two down. The first baseman 0 for 2. A strikeout and a fly out to right. Two runners in scoring position for the Patriots. Curveball in there for strike one. And you saw the Woodlawn coaches to first. You worry about the man in the batter's box here. This one fly to right center, and it's caught for out number three by Lunsford. So, Palestine Wheatley strands two, but they take advantage of four walks in the inning and a balk, and it's a one-run ball game. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Centennial Bank is committed to you. Since our founding in 1999, we've become one of the nation's most trusted banks by remembering that you come first by empowering our communities to reach their highest potential through our dedication to local charities, education, and exceptional service. Because we are proud to call Arkansas home. Banking with you in mind. Centennial Bank, member FDIC. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops, powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Hotel accommodations and sponsorship for the 2023 Arkansas High School State Baseball and Softball Championship broadcast provided by Hilton Garden Inn at 805 Amity Road in Conway and the home two suites at 820 Bill Dean Drive in Conway. Suddenly a one-run game here in Conway. Al Duckelbaum, Kevin Bohannon with you. First pitch, bunt, laid down, 
And it's going to be an out at first. 5-3 on the putout for Weatherford. 2-3-4 in this inning for Woodlawn. Owen Stober up next. Yeah, Woodlawn trying to make something happen right there. Left-handed pitcher falls off to that side. They want to make them make plays. Woodlawn's trying to find any way to score the score runs right here. Any surprise after the last inning that they're sticking with Hickman? A little bit. Hick, you know, it's like you said, he's worked out of his jams. And, you know, the, he had that one bad play. If you take away that fly ball, it's a two-to-one ball game right now in favor of the Patriots. So I think they want to ride him as long as they can. Good curveball in there. Yep, dropping it on the outside corner like he was the first couple of innings. Here's some Woodlawn fans. They think it's a little outside right there, but it's been there all game. We can get him to chase. It's one and two. Yeah, great 0 2 pitch right there. It's, it's right at the height where you can get somebody to swing, but it's outside of the zone. Stover over one with a walk. Swings, sends it to right. Worley coming in, slides to make the catch on that wet turf. Yeah, Worley was the one that kind of lost it in the lights earlier. Uh, made a great play right there, saved it a little bit. But talk about Hickman, the fastball and 0-2 count, really good setup pitch right there with 1-2 curveball. That's a nice job to make up for that play earlier. The two-knee dive to come in. <laughs> Here's Jaden Wilman. Ooh, that's a good pitch. Kyle's an umpire. I always wanted to take care of my catchers back there, so I always knew when they were coming up. So make sure if, if I'm going to call it, it better be a strike. Catcher pounded the dirt right there, the artificial dirt. He knew that he kind of let that ball go a little bit. They were set up outside, and it came in. Glove kind of got out of, out of control right there. Upstairs strike call. There's already so much pressure on this Woodlawn team when you're in the midst of a dynasty like this to win your ninth straight or ninth state title, I should say, since 2008. But how about the pressure mounting when you're in a one-run game in this situation? Yeah, with with, play, with a lot of younger players, also they, you know, this is not a senior-laden Woodlawn team. They've seen everybody before them pretty much do it, and here you are in a battle against the Patriots. Yeah, some of these young men, the first time Woodlawn won a state title in 08, you know, some of them were just born that year. So <laughs> that's all they've known is state championship baseball. That's a scary thought. Yeah. Hickman looking to go one, two, three for the second time this game. Wilmoth pops it into foul territory and out of play. He's the cleanup hitter for this Woodlawn team. A Bears team that's used to run ruling everybody. It's a one-run game against the Cinderella story of the tournament, the Palestine Wheatley Patriots. This one's going to find a hole and get in the right field. Worley plays it and gets it back in. And it's a two-out base hit for the Bears. Really good job of Wilmoth right there, staying on the curveball. He didn't try to do too much, just hit it over the second baseman's head, hit the ball where it's pitched. Great job by Jaden right there. And now Dylan Butler, as you see, Wilmoth send that one into right center. And Butler has walked in both of his at-bats. Got a courtesy runner, uh, number eight, Aiden Johnson, will come in and run at first base for Jaden Wilmoth. Worth clarifying, by the way, pitcher, catcher, you can do that. That's right. They're, they're courtesy runners. There's a difference between a courtesy runner and a pinch runner. Courtesy runners can come in. Pinch runners involve a substitution. It's always kind of you never know because you've got a young man that's sitting over there on the bench that's a little cool, a little cold, hasn't been playing. 
you want to make sure they know everything that's going on because it, he's not a starter, he's a sub. And you want to make sure Head is always in the game. Looking forward to maybe try to take second. No, not this time. Strike three call. Woodlawn strands a runner. One run game. It's three to two. It's a tight one. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball Championships in Arkansas PBS Sports. Stream the best of PBS on any device with the PBS Video app. All your favorite drama, history, science, news, and documentaries all in one place. Watch your PBS station live or catch up on the shows you missed. Support your PBS station and you can get Passport, giving you full seasons, early releases, special collections, and more. Download the PBS Video app or watch online. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car, to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service. Real people. Special thank you to the Conway Chamber of Commerce for helping us organize and set up the event and broadcast. The Conway Chamber of Commerce, serving the Conway area business community since 1891. For more information, visit conwaychamber.org. So many people to thank and make this championship weekend possible here on the campus of UCA in Conway. And boy, it's a good thing that we did because what a game here. Absolutely. It's three to two Woodlawn. As we head to the top of the sixth inning, Stover remains out there for the Bears. He replaced Howard, who started this game for Woodlawn. Palestine Wheatley taking advantage of some pitching uh, miscues and getting on the board and making this a one-run game. Kyle, one thing I've learned in covering high school baseball for the buzz and scorebook live over the last couple of years is expect the unexpected. We've seen it all season long, even though we've had preseason number ones. We're three for three now. You never know what could happen in this game with, with teenagers. Ty Myers to lead things off here. That Make a piece of him? Yeah, that was a swinging strike. So the rule right there, if they swing and make the attempt, doesn't matter if it hits them or not, it's a, it's a strike. So tough one for Myers right there. Have a look here. He picked up spin, but it kind of backed up on Stover a little bit instead of. But high pressure situations in just about every inning for these teams. Yeah, and it, it takes a it takes a toll on the pitchers. That's the biggest thing. Stover's not going to overpower you, but he's got a good mix of pitches, and he's in and around the zone right now. He's, and he's working. When I talk about four quadrants, Kyle, I'm talking about up, down, in, and out. And he's done a really good job of attacking all four quadrants of the zone. One, two, paints the outside part of the plate. Strikeout number two from Stover. One thing we've seen this game, Kyle, is a lot of backwards Ks or your strikeouts yeah. looking right now. He broke it off right the outside corner. It's been there all game, and James Brown's been calling it like that. Well, to your point earlier, too, about you never know what to expect in high school baseball. We were talking with Coach Tommy Richardson before the game, and he said some of the worst games you're involved in is Blaine Brown digs in, the second baseman, are the ones where you're expected to win. Yeah. <laughs> he said, he said, I've been in ones where I've been expected to do it, and sometimes that's the worst kind. And 
He would rather be the underdog, but that's just not where they're at right now. Yeah, that'll never happen yeah, as no. long as he's there. Yeah, exactly. Right down the middle of the fastball. And a lot of people may be asking, why stay at Woodlawn, a 2A school in Arkansas? He's the athletic director now. He He's in the twilight of his career and still winning games and still teaching young men. He could have moved on to college baseball a long time ago, but he loves youth, youth and loves teaching these young men how to play baseball. He gets Brown to chase outside. Yeah, it's his high school alma mater as well. That's right. He played at Southern Arkansas down in Magnolia. You know, and when you got a good thing going, sometimes you stick with it. That's right. One, two, check swing. He went. Back-to-back -back K's for Stover. Yeah, Stover's got the curveball working right now. Big 12-6 action. And it, you talk about running out to the baseball with, as a hitter. They're, they're running out to the ball, and they're not able to keep their hands back. You see right there with Brown. Just couldn't hold it back. So the top of the order now, Brody Parker. One for two on the day, or one for three. I really like Parker. Gives this one a ride to center field, and Bishop makes the catch to retire the side. 3-2, Woodlawn lead as we head to the bottom of the sixth inning, and weather moving in. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Can you see her greatness? When you attend her games, when you cheer her on, or when you participate in any way, you support your community and make it better, and you will see her greatness. Join us as we pledge to increase the visibility of women's sports in our communities. It makes a difference when we all are involved. At Everett Butte GMC, we proudly support our local female athletes and encourage you to do the same. See her greatness. This month in Passport on the PBS video app. Many of the stories told about kings and queens have been spun. Who knows where facts and fibs may take us next. This would have been your grandfather's experience, and it's really quite dramatic. Hell in frozen water. The war really mattered to Elizabeth. She is growing in confidence. These and other shows from Arkansas PBS are available with Passport on the PBS video app. Let me take you for a ride on the baseline. Let's go! Our Care is a proud sponsor of Arkansas PBS Sports. The Our Care network of medical clinics and pharmacies helps keep you in the game, playing your best. Our Care, so you can live your story. Quite the story unfolding here in Conway. By the way, this is game four of six for the baseball championships on championship weekend on the campus of UCA. Looking forward to tomorrow as well. Harding Academy and Rivercrest, and then Valley View and Little Rock Christian. Yeah, two games, that, and you and I will be back tomorrow, Kyle, for the call, and really looking forward to those games tomorrow. The 5A championship, they've been number one and number two all season long in our scorebook live Super 7 poll. There's Hickman, 90 pitches still out there. So the rule for our fans out there is you, you have 110. That, that's the limit you can go. You can start your batter on 109 and go over the 110 count, but you have to come out after that. This is Jace Bishop, the center fielder in the batter's box. Swing and a miss. They are riding Hickman. They, uh, they, are. they trust him. Just and to his credit, he's, he has yeah. navigated through <laughs> Yeah, pretty much everything thrown his way. Yeah, he, he's been through it all today. And, that's you know, Coach Whitson, as he gets ready to call the pitch in, uh, Hickman's worked through it all, and what an experience for the young man. Swing and a miss. He got him. Upstairs, back-to-back -back strikeouts going back to the last inning. Six strikeouts on the day now for Hickman. Got him to chase. Hickman working the top of that zone effectively with the fastball. The Woodlawn hitters are seem to can't pick up the spin right now, whether it's a curveball or fastball. Austin Howard has walked twice in this game and scored in the fourth. You see Kevin Whitson there, as we mentioned, he was 
just named the full-time coach at Palestine Wheatley. He began the season as a volunteer coach, proved himself along the way, and after that semifinal win, they surprised him in what he told us before the game was quite the emotional moment, giving him the full-time job. Certainly deserving when you navigate a program to its first ever finals appearance. That's right. They finished second in their in their 2A6 conference to Carlisle. Carlisle was ranked in the top five. They're ranked number two all season. Lost in the regional to Bay. And Coach Whitson's been able to carry the conference banner so far. That's quite the story. How about Hickman coming out and pounding the zone really quick? Got Bishop out. Strike out, and then he got a one-two count right here. He's working efficiently again. You talk about emptying the tank at this point in the game, too. <laughs> exactly. He knows he's up against his wall right here, and he's giving everything he's got. Big breaking ball. He got him. Make it three strikeouts in a row. He is saving some of his best for late in the game. Great pitch right there by Hickman. Set him up, and, you know, when you're ahead, 0-2, 1-2, you, you go to your best pitch, and that curve, but look at that 12-6 curveball. That starts by his head and ends at his knee. That's a great pitch. Absolutely frozen. So here's Tate Hall, the third baseman. Hall looking back at James Bryant asking if that's as far out as we're going to go with the pitch right there so he knows where to establish his strike zone. Navigating through trouble and giving his team a chance against this hot hitting Woodlawn team That's used to run ruling teams Sell them to three of them Yeah going back as we said earlier in the game going back to the regional tournament all their games in the State tournament were run rules and the last two of the regional tournament were swing and a miss Impressive stuff here in the sixth so far from Heckman. Talk about battling. You know, he, he reminds me of James McCormick, who won the state title with Haskell Harmony Grove in 2019, who's at Arkansas State right now. McCormick was a little bigger. He's 6'7", but, you know, same build, real physical young men get out there. Really good arm side run. I think James Heckman's got a, he's got a future throwing the baseball in high school in Arkansas. Guess missing. Really good nibble pitch right there, seeing if he can get a call. Catcher did a really good job of trying to keep it in the zone. Trying to send this game to the seventh and give his Patriots a chance. This is outside. Runner aboard. Seven strikeouts. Seven walks. That sort of describes the day for Hickman. Just absolutely dominant, but boy, a high pitch count. Sweating through some trouble, and let's see what they do here. And you got Whitson coming out to talk to his, his pitcher, like, look, this is probably going to be your last guy. We want to make sure you go after him. You want to make sure you get that out right here. Passing the two-hour mark of this one. We've seen three pitchers, all of whom have had to labor through some innings. Well, Lunsford has one of two hits for Woodlawn today. Wilma, of course, having the other last inning. That is what's amazing for... <laughs> this is shocking right now. <laughs> all the, the trouble he's had to navigate through, he's held Woodlawn to two hits. Lunsford's the nine-hole hitter. Fill up the zone and let your offense, let your defense work for you. That's that's just what he has to do right here. I think we would have to go a long way back in their schedule to find the last time Woodlawn was held to two hits through six. It'd be interesting to see what Hickman does though too right here. This is really when he's either, he's either going fastball up in the zone and then sets it up a good one-two pitch with a curveball. Swing and a miss. He got him. 
How about that? Three strikeouts to end the inning. And we head to the top of the seventh. Can Palestine Wheatley do it? It's 3-2. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. During the past year, we've been traversing the natural state with our cinematic drone from lakes and rivers, waterfalls, scenic byways, mountains, swamps, overlooks, and towering rock formations. This unique documentation of all four seasons from all four corners of the state with an aerial cinematic perspective will give you, the viewer, an Arkansas adventure like never before, exploring Arkansas from above. Download the PBS video app or watch online. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Local broadcast of Arkansas PBS programming is made possible in part by Community Bakery. Scratch-made breads, pastries, cakes, treats, and locally roasted coffees served daily at two locations in Little Rock, 1200 Main and 270 Shackleford. You never go to stop. Moorhart Field Services providing precise, original ground drone topography, serving the Midwest and South U.S., 24-hour delivery, survey grade accuracy. Visit MoorhartFieldServices.com for details. So here we go to the top of the seventh, and how many folks are joining us around the state tuning in, stunned by this score. 3-2 Woodlawn. Let me surprise you even more. The Bears have been held to two hits. In fact, they've been out hit by Palestine Wheatley three to two. But the Patriots have three outs to work with to send this game to the bottom of the seventh. The Cinderella story, the Palestine Wheatley Patriots against the dynasty here of Woodlawn. Stover will remain out there for the Bears. Medford scored their first run in the fifth inning. Let let off with the walk, well, didn't lead off the inning with the walk right there, but drew a walk and ended up coming around the score. It's 2-3-4, Medford, Hickman, Varner for Palestine Wheatley. This is who you want up, Kevin. That's right. Two-hole hitter, can do just about anything with the bat. He's in an 0-2 hole. Yeah, and then you got Hickman up behind him, Jacob Hickman, of course, has been a bulldog on the mound tonight. What a competitor, but he had, in the first inning had the triple uh, that got to the wall, so you never know what could happen right here if Medford gets on. Good eye. Stover's been pretty much 70, 75% breaking ball tonight. And he's done a really good job of throwing it out of the zone when he needs to and then landing it for a strike when he, when he has to. This is a grounder to short, the throw to first in time for out number one. It's one of those things, Kyle, we haven't had very many ground outs tonight. We talked sure about haven't. it earlier, fly ball, fly ball, and then we've had a couple back with the first pitch of the game from Austin Howard was back to the pitcher, but that may be the only third or fourth ground ball we've had. I think, according to my scorecard, at least for Palestine Weekly, that's just the second Hickman yeah. grounded into a double play. But he had that triple in the first, and you talk about a guy who is digging deep right now. He is battled through on the mound. What does he have left in the tank here in the batter's box? Keep their season alive. And one thing to mention, if he does get on, Kyle, it, him being two ways. You can have a courtesy runner because you have the re-entry rule in high school baseball that you can re-enter the starter. But he is still the pitcher of record, so you can have that courtesy runner for him. Good eye to get ahead 2-0. Well. We know that Stover's been mostly off-speed curveball pitcher, but Hickman has not seen a fastball since that triple. Stover and Hickman, pitcher against pitcher here. Yeah. 
Lays off the inside pitch. Hickman has really good plate discipline. His last, uh, last time up to bat against Howard. This one is up the middle, a base hit. How about Hickman digging deep and he gets aboard with a base hit? How about the 3-0 green light? That's what I'm talking about. Kudos to Kevin Witts and his staff. If it's 3-0 center cut, swing the bat, especially with your best hitter up there, let the big dog eat. Why not? You're in this position. Some people would say you have nothing to lose right there, but you know, and one of the best 3-0 hitters I ever had or ever seen was Caden Wallace, mm. who's playing great for Quad Cities right now in the Royals organization. I've seen him put a couple balls outside of UCA Stadium on 3-0 counts. In the Greenbrier days. Yeah. So the tying run is aboard in the top of the seventh for the cleanup hitter, Austin Varner. Curveball in there, strike one. Varner has walked twice, struck out in the fourth. Stover right here, being a majority curveball pitcher, sets up really well for a ground ball. That's what, that's what you're looking for right here. Varner gets a hold of it. It finds the gap into left field. Varner gets aboard, Hickman to second, and the go-ahead run is aboard for Palestine Wheatley in the top of the seventh. Shortened up his swing right there. Varner just did, just did what he needed to do to drive that ball past the six hole. And didn't try to do too much and over, over swing right there. The five-hole hitter is the DH, James Parson. One for two on the day with a hit in the fourth and a walk in the fifth. Hard to reiterate how crazy this is right now. Yeah, people are tuning in. They're thinking, how is it the seventh inning? Did y'all have rain delays? No, Palestine Wheatley has played one heck of a ball game right up to this point. If you're Austin Stover, that's your, your breaking ball. That's where you want it, right at the bottom of the zone right there. It's where they're beating it into the ground. You want those ground balls. You want that chance to get that 6-4 or 4-6-3 double play. One and one. Carson check swing a little bit too far on that one. Yeah, tried to hold up a little too late on that one. Really good pitch right there by Stover. Yeah, he knew it. Yeah, he knew it. Check swing again. He did he go? He did. Out number two. Hope played umpire James Brown went ahead and got that one right there. He saw it didn't have the need to go to his partner down at first base. And, you know, in high school, it's different from college. The, it's the intent. Did he intend to swing right there? In college baseball, they look for the barrel of the bat to go in to the front of the plate and passed it. But uh, James Bryant uh, said he, he had his intended, intention was to swing right there. So the Trey Guthrie, the center fielder, is going to be the last hope here for the Patriots. Curveball in there, strike one. Tying run in scoring position here in the top of the seventh. Guthrie is 0 for 2 with a walk. And West Broad did get inserted as a courtesy runner for Hickman at second base. Swing and a miss, 0-2 hole.
Patriots down to their final strike. Gets a hold of it to left field, moving back Weatherford, and the catch is made. The Bears had to battle, but the dynasty continues. 3-2, Woodlawn wins their ninth state title. What a game by Palestine Wheatley. Gave it all at the end right there. Put a, put a good swing on it. 0-2 count, and Coach Tommy Richardson, Woodlawn Bears, they've won their ninth state title in program history. Third straight, sixth in seven years for this Woodlawn program. Three, two winners. Boy, they had to battle for this one. We're gonna break it all down, show you the trophy presentation when we come back to Conway. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Baseball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops, powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Want to see even more Arkansas stories? Subscribe to Arkansas PBS on YouTube for original productions, extras from your favorite local programs, behind-the-scenes videos, and our exclusive coverage of high school sports. All available on demand and all Arkansas made. Don't miss out on more great Arkansas stories. Subscribe now. Arkansas, what's in your attic? Find out what your heirlooms, antiques, and unique collectibles are worth. Join us for the filming of a brand new show. Arkansas Treasures. Your contribution of $120 admits you and a guest to bring two items to our team of professional appraisers for an evaluation at a special event in the Arkansas PBS studios. And if your item and story are selected for filming, you may end up on our show. Additionally, your contribution gets you a one-year membership to Arkansas PBS, including our monthly member magazine and access to PBS Passport, where you can stream thousands of hours of incredible PBS content. This special event happens on August 5th and 6th in Conway. Tickets will go quickly, so guarantee your spot by calling now or visiting our website. Simply scan the QR code with your phone. Your treasure may be worth more than you know. Hugs and a celebration. I think perhaps a sigh of relief more than anything for those Woodlawn Bears. They win state championship number nine all since 2008. They have now won in 16, 17, 18, 21, 22, and 23. And you see Palestine Wheatley, nothing to hold their head about in this one. They were the Cinderella story, and now Woodlawn going to accept that trophy and hold that one high in the air. This Woodlawn team persevering through. Boy, they were tested from Palestine Wheatley today. They were, and Woodlawn's in, ends 31-3 and three on the season, and the last one is always and was the toughest tonight, Kyle. And you got to give it to Coach Whitson and his ball club. That team is going to be around next year. They're, yeah. they're going to push for, you know, maybe another state title run. Uh, but Coach Richardson and his staff, they've been here before. You could see it. Pressure moments. Young men rose to the situation. Austin Stover did, or Owen Stover did a really good job of coming in, getting those last six or seven outs. Yeah, they end their season with 21 straight wins. Let's show you how it happened here. This was a scoreless game for a long time until the fourth, and you know that's when you're Palestine Wheatley. You're starting to think, hey, we're hanging around in here. We're the underdogs. We got a chance. Let's take a look at how we got here. And you see from the second inning. Palestine Wheatley, they had their chances. They left seven men on through the first few innings. And how about that man, Hickman? He dug deep in this game. He pitched outstanding to give his team a chance. Holds Palestine Wheatley to, or holds Woodlawn, I should say, to two hits. If you're Palestine Wheatley, you're looking back at a couple mistakes. He couldn't come up with that big hit when you needed it most. They stranded three in that inning. And then Woodlawn able to capitalize. They scratch across a couple runs. And that's the play that just comes back to haunt you. There's no other way to say it. And Woodlawn taking the three nothing lead there. It was walks that got Palestine Weekly back into it. And then a balk gets them within a run. Three, two, 
And in the sixth inning here, well, they certainly, Palestine really had their chances, and then they close it out, and you see the trophy high above their head. So what a championship there. What a championship win for Woodlawn. And let's look ahead to what's on tap tomorrow. So glad we got this one in, by the way. Our coverage of the final four games of this championship weekend will begin with the 3A softball final between Atkins and Boonville. Looking forward to those baseball games tomorrow. Little Rock Christian Valley View and Harding Academy Rivercrest for what should be a spectacular Saturday, the round out championship weekend here in Conway. We appreciate you being with us. Congratulations to Palestine Wheatley for making it to this championship game for the first time and giving Woodlawn quite the scare. The Bears come out on top for state title number nine. Congratulations to the Bears and coach Tommy Richardson. For Kevin Bohannon and our Arkansas PBS Sports crew, I'm Kyle Duckelbaum. Have a great night. We'll see you back here.